All right, this is the gilding that I've been working with. This is my first one that I've been working with on getting rid of scar tissue. He is, I believe, 15, coming on 16 years old, and about 16, one, I believe. I haven't measured him, but I know he's super tall. And I've, this is my third day I've been working on him. I've already seen a huge difference already. Um, I've been working on this area right here. As you can see, there's white spots right here. There was a pinched nerve in there that I reset yesterday, and then I also reset a pinched nerve right there, but there's still a little bit of a bump right there. So I need to finish taking that scar tissue off right there. This is moving better today over the top of his withers. That was so, the skin was so stuck right there that you couldn't even move it a little bit, even a little bit. So I can actually move it a little bit now. So that's good. And then right in the wither area, I got rid of a lot of scar tissue in through here and then pushed that wither up. You can see where it's starting to round out now. There's the point of his wither. You can see where that, this is the point of his wither right here. So you can see where that, um, I'm still working on this part right here just around this just a little bit. I need to take that scar tissue right along and through here off and then push that wither back up. It's been compacted for so long because he's so high withered and nobody's found a really good saddle for him for probably when he was younger because he is so tall and high withered. But the problem being is when you have this much scar tissue right here on top of this wither, then right here is the point of the shoulder. Here is where the shoulder actually will move to. And you can see the point of the shoulder is right here. And this is his shoulder right here. This would be like the divot behind where the saddle rides back here. So this shoulder right here, it needs to move like, like this. It's gonna come up here and then it's gonna move back here. And if all of this area right in through here is full of scar tissue and jammed locked tight, that shoulder can't move freely this way. So I got this really, actually that feels really good. That was super tight a couple days ago and I couldn't even move the skin. So it's getting better. Because the more I can free up the shoulder, the more that he can move that shoulder. And then I found, I released some really good spots here. This is a really good area for the horses. Um, I know it is on me too, because it's right where the collarbone would be and stretching that neck out feels so good. I got one large uh, section right here. This, this is a large lump right here and a large lump right here. This one is almost completely gone. That one's almost completely gone. It stuck out quite a bit, but now it's getting better. There's, you can see it right there, just a little bit. So this is only my third day. And then right here, is the side of his jowl that I was talking about a couple days ago. It was full of scar tissue in through here, so you couldn't even see that jowl area. Um, it was puffed up quite a bit out here to about right mid right here. And so I was able to release all of this area the last couple days. So I just have a little bit right in through there left. That feels wonderful, but there's still a little bit right in through there. He's got a little bit of a string of scar tissue that's attached to this main scar tissue here. It's attached to this main scar tissue here, and it goes down right there. That's where it hooks on. There's a little divot right there, so he looks like he's had maybe a little bit of an accident right there. And that divot right there got a little bump on the outside of it, and then there's a, you can, I can feel that scar tissue right there. When he flexes like that, it really pops that out. I wish you could see it, see? He pops that scar tissue out where it stands up. It's going to right there. So if that scar tissue is attached, I can feel it right there. 
and right there. So there's a little divot right, little divot right there with a little bump. And then when he looks that other way, it engages that scar tissue clear up here in this jaw area. So that's where it's still attached up there. But it literally strings like it it pops it out when he turns that way. And then I also found another spot. It was right. It was right. It was right there. So what happened is when you would put a bridle or anything on him, it's going to ride right over that sore spot. It literally puffed up like a wind puff right there. And if you were just to kind of do this on it, he would literally pin his ears at you. And now I can put pressure on that and he doesn't do anything right there. So it's not as sore as it was, if sore at all. So I've been working on releasing that scar tissue run through there. He's still got some scar tissue run through here. I need to release quite a bit. I can, I can feel, I'm surprised he can even move his atlas. There's a lot of scar tissue right in through there. That one sore spot that he had right here, that sore spot, I, I, um, they said they used a, a bonnet on him. So a bonnet is going to keep his head down without um, adding the nose. Keeps his head down without, and he can still move his um, head free, or his nose free. But this keeps his head down with the bonnet. And that bonnet was riding right over the top of that, where that head stall would go to, right on that sore spot. So that was a big spot for him right there. So any time he was to go and put his head up, it was going to put pressure on that sore spot. And then, of course, that makes him want to jack his head up even more. And then you can see he's got a spot right here that is a scar. And then right where the halter would ride, he's got a divot you can see right there. So he's got scar tissue right there along his nose area. There's a big lump of scar tissue right there, and that's from tie downs over, um, over his period of his life. So he's got scar tissue right in through here. That's going to affect, I can feel that scar tissue in through here, there, and on the other side. So that's going to affect his breathing, right? Because that's the base of her, that, that uh, nostril cavity right there. So you might have to wear uh, those nose flares to get him to breathe better. That's going to affect his breathing right there. So there's a lot of divot, can, or a lot of scar tissue right there. You can see the divot, and then the scar tissue is built up around here. And then you can look and see his mouth. He's got um, war wounds, from, probably from when he was younger, where it's been sliced in, in that bit. So he probably doesn't really have any feeling right there. So I'm going to have to work on getting that scar tissue um, released along his mouth area. And what else did I see? Oh yeah, this area right here. Um, he's had some kind of an accident right there. It's, I can feel the scar in through there. I got some of that released yesterday, but it's so... I mean, part of that is muscle, yes, and part of that is his hip bone, but there's actually a lot of scar tissue. You can feel a scar right in through there and right in through there. And he had some sore spots right up here when I went to go and, and, and work on that scar tissue right there. He had some soreness right through there. He wasn't really too sore in the back, but what I've been working on today is releasing that hip, is pushing that hip out. He's got a little um, muscle knot right here on both sides. He's kind of shaking his head right there. He's got a muscle knot right there on both sides. That's going to have to be worked out. And then he's got, you can see, He's got a bump, a bump, bump, and a bump on his spine. And those are scar tissue. It's like bump, 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 bump. That's scar tissue along his uh, spine right there that needs to be taken and getting rid of. That will affect his um, how he can get up underneath of himself. And then I found a huge amount of scar tissue. It would be... It would be way up in here, in the groin area, way up high, I found uh, some scar tissue that was actually connected. So it was way up in here, 
when I reached up underneath of him. It was way, way up in here. And that was activated. It, it's attached to this hip wound. So that scar tissue that I released in that um, inner thigh was actually connected to this hip uh, scar right here. And then if you watch the video that I did yesterday when I was releasing that scar tissue, he uh, leaned forward and stretched into it. And when he did, that's, that finished uh, snapping it. So he was actually helping me. I think that's wonderful. He's got um, a really large wind puff right there. You can see it. This is his ankle right here, but that's the wind puff right there. He said he's had it forever. So we're going to see if maybe that will go down at all. You can see how big that is. Let me see. What else do we got here? Scoot him over a little bit. So you can see how that one kind of stands out too. But it's not quite like that other one. And you can see he's got the white on both sides right there. He's got a lump on both sides, so that right there actually feels way better. So I'm going to release that some more. And then you can see on his mouth right here, he's got where it's been cut also right there. That side looks pretty good. Now what I'm going to do is going to come over here and see if I can put this on my stand. All right. And put it on my stand and then come over here and demonstrate with him on something real quick. Can we move him over? One more. There you go. Good boy. <clears throat> what I want to demonstrate here is the spots that he had scar tissue. He's got scar tissue right here. Let me see if I can feel it. I worked on it yesterday. Okay, it's right about here. There's a big round area. It actually goes right up into here. So this whole area right here is full of scar tissue. And what that is from is your spurs. So this gilding, like I said, he's probably 15, 16 years old. He's been bell racing all of his life. So most everybody wears spurs when they run. I don't condone it. I never wear spurs when I run. I wear spurs when I train. You shouldn't have to wear spurs when you run. Because what happens is when you when you're trying to get speed out of your horse, you have to think about this. When a horse is running and you're trying to get that horse to stretch out, what you need to do is to be able to not get in the way of these horses when they are striding out. And if you look at a racehorse rider, trainer, a jockey on a racehorse, they are moving with that horse, in rhythm with that horse, and then they come back here and tap as they reach out, tap as they reach out, tap as they reach out. So what happens is when you tap as they are lifting off, you're going to make those horses stride out longer. You're going to get more reach out of those horses because as you, as you come back here and tap, they stride out and they reach farther. Now, let's say, let's just take an average bell racer. Let's just uh, break down the home run. Run home. They go around that third barrel, and I'm not going to pick on anybody. This is just 99% uh, of the videos. If you go out there and watch any video, this is kind of what you're going to see. After that third barrel, they're going to be, for one, a quarter of them are not in their seats, a quarter of them are being ejected out of their seats as they're coming out of that third barrel. 
So some of them, when you see them, their legs should be here on the side as they come out of the barrel, are like this. The, the person's legs are like this as that horse is coming out of that barrel. And what do they have on the end of their legs, and end of their feet? Spurs. So as that horse is coming out of that barrel, that horse is getting ready to launch up. And as they launch up, they launch you too because you're not in the right position coming out of the barrel. So as that horse goes to come out of that barrel and launch up out of that barrel, if you're not in your position, you're also going to be launched up. And when you are like this, and your butt is this far or this far out of the saddle, and I've seen some pictures that people are so proud of that their legs are like this, and their butt is this far out of the saddle. There's absolutely no contact with that horse whatsoever. No contact at all. And when you're talking about becoming one with your animal and having the best time you can possibly get, you need to be one with that animal. That animal needs to be able to feel you at any given second. And you need to be able to feel your horse at any given second. Because when you do, you're able to correct things, move things, shift things, add things, take things away. Think in that little bit of a moment of what you need to do. Because yes, you are a jockey, but you're also a trainer. Anytime you are around your horse, you are training your horse. I don't care if you go out there to catch your horse, you are a trainer. If you're loading your horse, you are a trainer. If you saddle your horse, you are a trainer. If you wash your horse, if you put fly spray on your horse, if you do anything with your horse, you are the trainer. Now, when a horse comes out of that third barrel and launches up, and you're out of position, it's going to launch you up out of that saddle. Boom. You're out of position. For one, most of the time you're hanging on to that horse's head because if your butt's this far off the ground, or off the saddle and your legs are like this and you have no contact, you got to hold on somehow. Half of them are holding on to their face when they're coming out of that barrel. So when that horse launches like this, you're coming into that third barrel. If it's a uh, left-hand turn, you have dropped your right hand down to the horn. You have came out of that barrel with your left hand forward and all of a sudden that horse propels forward and does this, and all of a sudden you're like, woo, wee, and where, what happens? You've got that left hand on that rein going like that, and the horse's face is like this, ooh. You know what this does to a horse's body when you're trying to do that? Yeah. It's raining. How wonderful. They just said absolutely no rain for the next two days, and I said, wouldn't it be cool if it rained? It's raining. I love this. Absolutely love this. It's so nice out. So, again, coming out of that third barrel, you've got your hand on the horn, you're sitting here, you've got your left hand forward coming out, you're holding on here and you're pushing up into that, right? And you're riding that g-force coming out of that barrel, which puts you in position. You've got your hand low, your body sit down and not up in the air. Now, on the run home, most people are doing this. Beating their horses on the way home, both sides, spurring that horse with spurs, both spurs. Every time you take and you kick on your horse, boom, like that, especially if your legs are like this and you're really kicking, guess what you're doing? You are kicking the air out of your horse. So what happens is when your horse goes to lift off and you go, come on, go faster, it's like, ugh. I have literally seen, I don't know how many horses, when you slow down that, that third barrel, any of those barrels, but when you slow down that barrel, that barrel video, as they go around that barrel, Nine times out of ten, when you're wearing your spurs, you don't know where your legs are half the time. And so when they go around that barrel, a lot of times you're going to use your legs to hold on. I've seen it over and over and over. And when they come out of that barrel, half of them are hooking them with a spur on the flank as they're coming out trying to hold on. Boom. 
you're, you're cueing your horse for one. Every little movement, every little shift of that weight, you're cueing your horse. You should be at least cueing your horse. It's like me with my horses, when I come in to a barrel, I wanna be able to sit and shift that hip, shift that hip, shift that hip. What that does is it opens up that shoulder brings that hind in underneath of them and then allows them to make that turn with an open rig cage. But, <laughs> he's like, get to work. <laughs> but if you have a rib area here that is full of scar tissue from kicking on these horses nonstop, for one, you're dulling them up. For two, you're putting scar tissue on those precious ribs. Trust me, I've broken my ribs before. I know what scar tissue is like on ribs, it hurts. And so when those horses are trying to stride out, they can't stride out completely because it hurts. They've got too much scar tissue here that is pulling their ribs together. And the more you're trying to get them to stride out, they can't stride out. Now, the area that he had that scar tissue on his inner groin to this area, when he was to go to push off here with that here, it actually caused more damage, not damage, but yeah, kind of, more damage, more scar tissue on that left, that right hip, right here. So that was attached to that, and every time he would go to push off, it was pulling on that scar tissue, which is doing that right here. So he was not able to get a full, complete push off with that, because he didn't have uh, full motion with that. Then, with having his, he's got two large knots on both sides, up here and here. Yes, he can move his head this way and this way, but he doesn't have free range of that neck. And then he's jammed up and through here with so much scar tissue that as far as his head goes, being able to cock that, so if you're trying to get an inside, so this would be his right, so go into that first barrel, right? So me, when I do this, when I go up into that first barrel, I'm going to shift my weight back on my, on my kind of like your back pockets almost, so they feel that shift of weight coming, and that rates them down and slows them down and gets them up underneath their hind. Then you can just take and roll your hand just a little bit to lift that shoulder, and then take this leg and what I call close the door. So put your inside leg on that horse, and then depending on how they feel, I'm gonna either massage or bump, depending on if I take a hold of them and say, hey, are you here with me? And if they say, huh, no, I'm not, I'm gonna do it my way, and I'm gonna drop that shoulder, I'm gonna stiffen my rib cage, I'm gonna lock this hip, because all of this right side hurts, and plus this hurts here, so when you go to take him to get that nose in and tipped and lift that shoulder, you can't because it hurts him to be able to cock that head and lift this way. So when you want him to have that inside eye just a little bit, and you lift up just a little bit, you wanna see that inside eye, and then lift that shoulder up, lift that shoulder up, take your outside leg off, so that way he can get up underneath of himself, right? So if you're taking that inside nose just a little bit, he can't do this. So therefore, he braces here, braces here, braces here, braces here, and he goes, Ugh. and then he either hits the barrel or he comes out wide on the backside and then screws up your second barrel because your, your first barrel is your money barrel. If you can't make your first barrel, you might as well just let your whole run just go because your first barrel is your money barrel. If you can't figure out your first barrel, you might as well just give it up. <laughs> so with him being on his worst side is his right side, that's gonna be his money barrel because he is a right-handed turning horse. And he is, he was really tender and it was literally lar enlarged, like a, that wind puff down there, underneath where that, um, that bonnet would be, would be fitting. So as, that, as he puts his head up, because he's getting excited, it's putting pressure right there over that painful spot. And when you do that, it causes more pain to the horse. And what happens when you cause pain to the horse? That head's gonna go up, their body's gonna get rigid, their turns are gonna be like, urch, 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 urch. 
and they're going to be just so all over the place. It'd be like riding King Kong through the barrels because that horse is in so much pain, there's no softness anywhere. And to be a barrel horse, you need to have softness. You need to have softness in the mouth. You need to have softness in the jaw. You need to have softness in that pole and that atlas. You need to have softness in that shoulder. You need to have softness in the hips. <laughs> you need to have softness in that spine. He was so locked up in the spine here. It's still, it's better, but he's still got a lot of um, scar tissue right there, right over where that um, saddle would sit right here. You can see he's still a little sore. And he hasn't even been rode in a year. He's never even had a, you know, he hasn't been rode in a year. So he should not be sore. What else? So that was my big spiel on using spurs when you compete. Um, I'm not a fan. I've been around a lot of people who they use their spurs um, just as bad as their hands. I've seen some people jerk and kick and jerk and spur and, and bloody their mouths just like him. He's got cuts on both sides of his mouth, so you, can, you know he's had a bloody mouth probably a few times. And if he's in pain and he's trying to run, what's he going to do? He's going to be, he's going to be probably, I'm not sure because I don't, I've never, I've never rode him, but he's probably going to have, he's going to be probably excited at the gate, if not have gate issues, because going into that, into that arena is going to scream pain to him. And when you go into an arena with a horse that's screaming pain, they're not going to give you their 100%. All they're going to be doing is thinking about, I just want this to be over with. I want to go back in the pasture, and I don't want you to catch me again. I don't want you to ride me again. And there's your behavioral issues. When a horse starts having pain and they don't enjoy their job, you're going to have to start having behavioral issues. Because what happens is once you have the pain, then their horses are going to lock up. They're not going to be as fluent, as fluid in their movement. And then when that happens, guess what happens? They get injured, they hurt themselves, they pull something because they're trying to compensate for their body that hurts. They're trying to get around it the best as possible as they can with as less pain as they can. And then if you're on top of them, pulling this way and pulling that way and hanging on by the seat of your pants and he's ejecting you out of the seat and you're flopping all over and smacking him on the back. I mean, if, if your butt is this far off the air or off the saddle, right? If, you're, if your butt is this far off the saddle and your legs are right here, what's going to happen on the next jump? Boom. Right down. Right down in here. Right where, he, right where that uh, pinched nerve was on his back. That is where you're going to go wham. And when you come down on that horse and wham, you're going to be right on there on the kidneys. Do you think he's going to like that? He's not going to like that at all. So when you wonder why your horses aren't wanting to go in the arena, why they're not wanting to perform like they should, um, why, they're, why all of a sudden they just quit wanting to perform, they don't give you that 110%, um, a lot of different reasons. But the biggest thing is going to be pain. He's got a ton of scar tissue right where this halter rides, right where that uh, tie down, because he's, it's like embedded right here with so much scar tissue around it from his, his um, tie down being you know, he's pulling up against that tie down. And then up here being too much pressure because of that uh, bonnet on his head. So when you have a horse that is screaming pain in the head, that's where their brain is. I mean, I know this for a fact because I have been getting scar tissue off my body now for over a year. I've been working at it little by little. And I understand what it's like to have that much scar tissue on the head. It, 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 it's it's uh, very troubling. So this gilding, I'm really excited. He's come. He's this is my only third day with him. Um, but he has come a long way. I wanted to show you guys something real quick. I got this. This is actually mine. I use for my back. Uh, my chiropractor, I bought it for my chiropractor. It's actually wonderful. Um, this is all I've used to um, help relieve uh, the issues on my back and, and whatnot and stretch it. But what I'm going to show you here is something I tried with him earlier today in his first session. Right there. 
is what I was doing is I was taking it right in that loin area and it's it's kind of like a plastic so it's going to stretch and pull that area right there so I'm going to put it over there and I'm going to stretch 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 good boy right over that that hip point right there oh yeah he says what are you doing but it's usually there we go his tail just went up right there relieve some of that stress right there oh yeah so I'm gonna work some more on that on that point of that hip because he was pretty stressed right there so anytime that lower back from where his kidney areas are that's where you're gonna hit every time that you are bouncing up and down on the saddle and that's gonna cause issues the, towards the point of his hip down into his loin area it's gonna cause issues down into his hocks down into his um, ankles and then that's also gonna cause issues on the front end too so anyway that was a, a little video that I wanted to show you I thought that was a uh, interesting and a lot of the stuff that I'm pointing out is kind of basic stuff of um, what you would see on most any barrel horse so I'm pretty excited that he is here and allowing me to do such wonderful work on him and I can't wait to see how far he comes we're gonna give him about a month of body treatment and see where he's at and if you guys are interested, I am going to be taking on two more horses and I can put them in, I've got 12 by, oh, 48, a 12 by 48 stall for each one of them. And then also they have daily turnout into a big pasture. But they're going to get body work uh, five days a week. I like to do two hour sessions, uh, hour for each session so two different times so we don't um, make them sore but I am seeing huge difference with him already just the trigger releases you can always tell when it trigger releases because you'll feel that um, scar tissue jumping in your in your fingers and, and moving like a, like a muscle twitching and all of a sudden it just releases and that's gone so anyway that was a little video of this big handsome man if you have any questions, please feel free to message me or comment. Thank you very much for joining and have a wonderful blessed day.